Hey everybody, it's lawn mowing season and if you've got a mower like this one that has automatic throttle control and there is uh, not a way for you to adjust that idle or so you would think, we're going to show you a way to do that and we're actually going to show you two things here in this video. We're going to show you how to adjust the idle on a mower like this Honda HRX that has an automatic throttle adjustment and we're also going to show you how to check your RPM. Stay tuned, coming right up. So before we do any adjustments to the engine on this, I want to say a couple things. First of all, if you've never done this before, if you've never worked with small engines and you're not sure about what you're doing, I would let a professional handle this. Yes, you can do it, but there's also the potential to mess things up. So proceed at your own peril. That said, it's a pretty easy task. And there's a tool that we're going to use that's going to make this a whole lot easier. You can get these on Amazon, and I will put a link to this in the description. This does two things. It's got an hour meter on it, and it will also show you RPM. And that is important because if we make any adjustments to the engine, we need to know what that RPM is, and we need to get that RPM to the recommended level, which is recommended by the manufacturer, in this case, Honda. Now, if you're looking for the recommended RPMs, there will be... Uh, a shop manual for each mower. Sometimes those are a purchased item. Google is your friend. A lot of times if you put in the model number and the manufacturer or the manufacturer and the model number followed by some search terms like recommended RPM, you'll find an example out of the shop manual. Just make sure that the sources that you're using are credible sources and it's not just somebody offering out some advice that doesn't have any experience. That said, our next step is going to be, in this case, to get at the spark plug, okay? And to do that on this mower, and again, this is an HRX, I've got to take the cover off here just to have access to this plug wire. All right, I've got all the tools I'm going to need laid out here. And if, you're, if you happen to be working on an HRX 217 like I am, I'm going to tell you what those are. First, you're going to need a 10 millimeter socket, and that's going to go on these three nuts that cover the engine cover, or I should say that keep the engine cover on. Later on, you're gonna need a set of needle nose pliers, and you're gonna need something to remove the spark plug with. Now, I've got, this is an actual spark plug socket. It's a 13 16 and that fits on the NGK that comes with or this more, or that was included by the OEM. So let's go ahead and let's get this engine cover off. Now guys, when you pull this engine cover off, take note that the gas tank is part of the actual cover. So you, you don't need to disconnect any of the fuel lines on this. We're just gonna simply flip it around and set it to the side so that we can get to the plug wire here. All right, so we're gonna pop our plug cover off. And I will say that one of the most important and best things that you can do in a tune-up, and this is a very inexpensive fix, is to replace the spark plug. If it's more than a season old, it's not that expensive to do. Um, I recommend using what the manufacturer calls for. Now, there's a lot of people out there that say that doesn't matter. Uh, you know, and they'll suggest that you use Bosch plugs instead of, in this case, Honda recommends in the manual NGK, and you can see that's what I've got in here. It's a BPR 5ES. Sorry that it's upside down. I am a huge fan of going with the manufacturer recommendations on these plugs. This is the only plug that's used in this engine. 
it needs to be to the exact spec to get the best possible results. Now this one, not bad, but I'd go ahead and replace this if it were me just because it's not gonna hurt and it's probably a $10 part. Okay, so this is how this kit comes out of the box. You've got a couple plastic tie wraps here <laughs> that I just dropped and um, you've got your wires all bundled together. Now there are instructions on the back of the packaging that are gonna show you how to hook this meter up based on your setup. And I'm gonna show you how it goes onto this Honda. All right, so when we unbundle the wires in this meter right here, we get a white wire and a red wire. Now on this particular Honda, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap the red wire around the plug wire about five times, four or five times, I'm gonna do it five times. And then you take the white wire and you're gonna attach it to one of the engine bolts. Now, this is gonna get really, really hot. In fact, these wafers are for cooling the engine. I'm gonna use the bolt up here that goes on the muffler cover because it's gonna get a little less hot. But you need to keep in mind when you do this that you don't want wire sitting up here in this area that can be caught as some moving parts and there's several moving parts in here that are gonna move or turn, right? So you, we're gonna bundle these wires up neatly and that's what those tie wraps were for earlier. Also note that these bolts here use that same 10 millimeter socket that we used earlier to take the cover off. So I'm gonna pop this thing loose right now and we're gonna get it going. That was on pretty tight. You don't need to take this bolt all the way out. We're just trying to get it out far enough that we can slide this guy in. If this is too wide, it is okay to pinch this together a little bit. You can use those needle nose pliers that we mentioned earlier. Uh, I'm not going to just because I'll get a good snug fit as it came. And I'm intentionally trying to route this wire up and not down on top of that cover so that it doesn't melt the wire later when the engine is running. All right, I'm gonna tighten it back the way it was. And next we're gonna wrap this wire around the plug. Now, notice that I've got this disconnected. It's gonna be a whole lot easier to wrap this wire around right with it disconnected because if I had it connected, now I've gotta keep feeding through this has a cover on it, this plastic part right here. We want to avoid that. We want to go back here and use the rubber part of this plug wire. We don't want to start at the end. We want to leave a little bit extra here, okay? You'll see why in a minute. And we're gonna do a tight wrap, as tight as I can get it, uh, close together, meaning not spaced apart like that. We're gonna keep those wires next to each other they should be touching their buddy as they go around. There's three, there's four, and I'm gonna do one more, and I'm gonna leave it facing up like that, okay? Now I'm gonna come back here to my tie wrap. I'm gonna take this extra that I started with. I'm gonna bring it back here and I'm gonna tie wrap this. To the plug wire over that plastic shielding. Just like that. All right, we're gonna cut this off in a minute. This is snug, it's tight. Don't have anything laying around that's gonna get caught in moving parts. The other tie wrap is gonna get used on the white wire. And what we're actually gonna do is I untangle my meter here, fish it through. Is we're, gonna, we're gonna wrap up the white wire and the extra black wire together. I am using some diagonal cutters to clip these extra parts hanging out of the tie wraps. You can use scissors, just be careful not to cut 
the actual wires when you do that. I'm gonna use one more tie wrap here, just making sure that's snug. I'm gonna put it here, and I'm gonna wrap this extra up, this bundled wire up. This is a little bit bigger tie wrap. Uh, this is just one that I had in the garage. The reason that I'm doing this is so that, again, we don't want any parts dangling around that can get moved or jarred, or as you tip the more up and turn it, they can get caught on something else. So we're just gonna snug that up cut it off and now we're ready to put our engine cover back on so we've got the cover back on move the camera up a little bit so you can see what I'm doing on the top side this is where I'm gonna mount this run meter but you can put it wherever you like you can put it here you can put it down here on the, I wouldn't put it on the air filter cover, although you could. Um, I'm gonna flip mine back around so that the driver can see it and leave it sit just like that. I'm gonna use some double-sided adhesive tape because I don't wanna drill holes in my cover. But if you're a fan of drilling holes in plastic, as long as you're using very short screws, you could do it that way. If you cut under a lot of brush or bushes or shrubs or something where you've got low clearance, you just need to be mindful of this. You can take it off after you're done with what we're about to do. I just like to leave mine on because this thing has the added bonus of an hour meter. And a lot of the stuff in your service manual does base what's due by the hours the engine has run. All right, not gonna get into this on this video, but this is adjustable for different kinds of engines. This is a four stroke engine and it's one spark per revolution of the engine. You need to look that up for your engine. Uh, it is important so that you get the right readings on this meter, but there are ways to go in and set this guy for the type of engine that you have and specifically for the number of sparks per revolution. Those instructions are on the packaging and it's pretty easy to follow. All right, now this next step's important, guys. We never want to make adjustments to a cold engine. So before I show you how to adjust that idle, and now that we've got our RPM meter installed, we're going to start this thing up, and I'm going to go use it a little bit. You can let it idle for a few minutes, or you can just mow a couple laps in your lawn, whatever you prefer, but you need to be doing this on a warm engine. So I'll be right back with you. All right, so now that we've got our engine warmed up, we're gonna adjust the RPM. Now, this next step is important and you need to know what your idle RPMs are for your specific mower. Uh, that can be found in a service manual. Sometimes it's in the owner's manual, sometimes not. Sometimes you can send a, a note to your manufacturer to their customer service and ask them. Sometimes they'll give you that information. Uh, I can tell you on this particular Honda HRX, it's between 2950 and 3100 RPMs. Now, if you live in the Southern United States like I do, it's 2950 to 3100 RPMs, okay? But that's gonna vary depending on your model. All right, guys, the moment you've been waiting for, here is how you adjust the idle on a, uh, an automatic throttle push mower uh, or lawn mower. Now, this is gonna be something you're gonna wanna do with the mower warmed up and running. I've got it turned off right now just so that you can hear me walk you through this. But if you will look, right here is the throttle cable. <clears throat> And down here is this linkage that comes back into the choke control. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our needle nose pliers and we're just going to adjust 
the spring just a little bit. Now, you can also just bend the arm a little bit, and I've seen guys suggest that as a way to do it. That's fine. You need to keep in mind that you are making very, very subtle adjustments. I mean, like, you're just barely going to grab this thing, and it's going to take two hands. You're going to have to hold it in place up here with one hand, and you're going to put your needle nose pliers down here with the other hand, and you're going to make a slight bend. Now, you're going to notice when you pull it one way, it's going to speed up, and when you twist it the other way, it's going to slow down. So you need to match that to whatever your recommended RPM is. You also want to go through here and make sure that this particular spring looks clean, okay, that there's nothing caught in here, that this thing's not stretched out or broken, that everything looks good here. And the reason for that is, and if you've got a lot of dirt or debris in here, you can clean that off. But anything that's adding pressure to this spring is going to change your idle, right? So I'm going to do this with it running just so that you can hear what happens. guys and I just want to stress one last time without the engine running here that if you're making subtle bends to your idle system here you really need to do this as a last resort make sure first of all that you've got a fresh plug in there that it man matches the manufacturer specifications a lot of times you can find that in your manual or if you're pretty sure that the plug that's in it right now is the one that it came with just take that out and go match it up if you've done all of those things, your mower's in great shape and it just needs a, a minor adjustment, this is where you can do that. Uh, sometimes these springs do get worn out, so it is possible if you look at that thing and it looks a little beat up, that just getting this replacement spring part would do enough to fix your problem. But certainly if that doesn't do it, this guy right here, you can bend just a little bit and that'll take care of some minor engine idle adjustments. All right, guys, that is it for this time. Thank you for watching. If this video was helpful to you, if you enjoyed it, please do us a favor, give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. We've got a lot of great content out there, not just on small engines, but on large engines, cars, trucks, SUVs, and the automotive industry in general. You can also check out our podcast and a lot of great written content. You can find that information on our website at partscountergurus.com. Again, thanks for watching everybody, and we'll see you next time.